Hey, Facebook. I'm back in a darkened car. I feel like my my uh, my face is in a half moon phase, um, which is a little strange, but um, that is what it is. It is December and it's dark outside and winter is definitely here. I don't care if it's not December 21st. Uh, we here know that December brings winter. Um, there are, as usual, it's a crazy time of year, but I wanted to start off with actually a statistic that I read today. Um, which is was a little harrowing. Which there was there was a lot of news I think today in the last couple of days about statistics uh, about um, our students and how various uh, attempts, particularly federal investment in education and testing over the last decades, uh, have really not produced the results that we had hoped for, um, and that we need to learn something from that and and take a different tact or at least find a way to to. Um, collaborate on what we have to agree is a common goal, which is that our kids, does, you know, if we're going to have a future, we are, we need to focus on our kids and our kid and, and their education. But the statistic to me that was most jarring was that 14% of American students could reliably tell the difference between fact and opinion. And that has so many implications for citizenship, for um, science, for progress as, for partisanship, for progress as a country, bipartisanship, for work together, for agreement on a set of common facts. Uh, we have a lot of work to do, and I, I suspect that that correcting or working on that and improving that statistic is not something that is going to be done legislatively, either at the federal or state level. It's, it's going to have to have a huge cultural component, which is you know, having us, you know, the whole educational model is built on the premise that there is such a thing as a set of facts uh, that we can and build off of. And we are particularly, I think, in this social media era of extreme partisanship, losing track of that. And I think it's up to every one of us to do what we can to recapture that and to and to actually pay attention to what is objectively true and to try to impart that to our kids and that the important difference between um uh, a, a, a you know an opinion piece or uh, an assertion that is not based on anything and and an actually well you know reasoned factual uh, journalistic piece for example um, so we'll we'll see what we can do on that I actually spent this morning um, in a meeting talking about the funding for vocational agricultural education which as I've said before I really think that the the model of the way we treat teach uh, uh, vocational agricultural programs in the, in the state, at least in this region that, that I'm most familiar with, is a really important model because it, it does impart vital skills to kids, whether or not they remain in agriculture, having to do with the ability to run a project, to identify mentorships, to do research, fact-based fact research that's going to have you know, direct implications for their project, uh, how to publicly speak, how to, how to uh, you know, relate to other people. Um, it, it, those are impressive skills, and so that was an, a very positive way to start out the day. Of course, we have work to do to make sure that, that all the kids that can benefit from that kind of education, whether or not they have an agricultural background, um, get access to it because it's it really has a significantly successful record of success. And success is defined in, in many, many ways, you know, from, from going to a, you know, four-year college level and becoming uh, an economist to... Uh, running a landscaping business to uh, becoming a veterinarian. I mean, there are many, many ways to use those skills. And I would argue, argue, argue again, uh, not just in the agricultural realm. So that was a more positive way. But um, I'm going to be focused on that, that harrowing statistic. Um, on a more positive note, it's Human uh, Universal Human Rights Month. So, so a good month to stand up for uh, equality, justice, dignity, uh, uh, the positive things that we should all share with one another and to make sure that as part of that, that we listen uh, hard to what other people are saying to us and try to understand what they're saying before we jump right in and try to disagree with them. Um, I think that's uh, connected to that that earlier statistic about people not knowing the difference between fact and opinion, uh, that actually if you pause to actually listen to what someone's saying to you, you might um, we might find that common piece of uh, uh, piece of common ground. Um, what else? Oh, little things. The census is hiring, uh, and I will put statistics about where you can find that. My my, I remember when I was a little girl, my aunt Sally uh, worked for the census. 
Uh, in fact, I think I can see my cousin uh, is watching this, so maybe she remembers this, but I remember when she worked um, for the census knocking on doors, and she is still someone who can talk to anyone for any length of time, and I imagine she was really good at that job because she really was willing to talk to anyone and try to find out uh, the things that the census needed to know in a friendly and open way. Um, so I'm thinking of my Aunt Sally. Um, as, as we try to recruit uh, census workers because the census is really critical for identifying all the people who are living in our communities because that we need to, uh, it has a huge uh, relevance for the kind of uh, resources that are available to all of us. So, um, so I will post information about if you are interested in going to work for the census. Um, it is a busy, busy time of year. I've been telling everyone that it feels like that, that vortex between Thanksgiving and Christmas is feels unusually powerful this year because it's shorter than normal. And here we had a storm right after Thanksgiving. And at least for me, that meant that it delayed my kids getting back to their, their college um, campuses and so we sort of feel like we had an extended snow day getting to and from the airport and getting everybody off to where they needed to be. So it is a crazy, crazy busy time of year. Um, I have been able to do, so I'm only going to, again, highlight a couple events. I did some great church events in the last uh, week or so, including celebrating the 200th, 200th birthday of Christ Church Episcopal in, in Sharon. And as I told them at the time, it was just a perfect day to be. It was a pretty gloomy, sleety November day and to walk into that sanctuary and feel the the powerful community there and the beautiful um, church itself and the warmth both spiritual and literal in that room was was a, it was a really wonderful place to be so congratulations on your 200th anniversary uh, also went to a great breakfast at St. Marin uh, Church in Torrington uh, it's always just a nice time to just sit and chat with people about all manner of things uh, there's no agenda uh, and I really enjoyed that um, also had a bre veterans breakfast at Oliver Walcott. Um, was that this morning or yesterday? I don't know. It's been a long day. Um, but that is a real pleasure, particularly because when these veterans who come for this breakfast make themselves available to students to talk about their experiences and the power of service and the camaraderie that comes from that service and that so many there are so many different ways to serve in the military and, and how it can really be... Um, it's a powerful thing. You know, not only do we all owe them a huge debt of gratitude for what they do, but it, it, the many, it service isn't, we have, you know, maybe a particular idea of what it means to serve in the military. And actually there are many, many ways to do that. And so the more that our kids in particular have access to veterans in the community and can understand what that meant and what it looked like and the power that it held for them and the skills that they learned and how it enabled them to pay for continuing education in college, uh, it's huge. So I'm, I was really grateful that they, so many of them came to Oliver Walcott, um, for breakfast that morning. Um, we also had yesterday an update on Sharon Hospital, um, the independent monitor that uh, was assigned in um, connection with the merger between Sharon Hospital and Western Connecticut Health Network, which is now um, called New Vance. Um, was Sharon Hospital uh, HealthQuest and Western Connecticut uh, Health Network. Um, gave a very good presentation and and I think what's clear is you know the challenges of delivering uh, health care in a rural environment remain and will remain and but the the event was really well attended which just shows that our community is deeply invested in the success of Sharon Hospital and making sure uh, that the that that new Vance lives up to its commitments but also there was a great deal of positivity um, in the room in particular because um, the now outgoing head of Sharon Hospital, uh, Denise George, uh, who was just a temporary head, uh, really uh, built a lot of community trust and people were very felt listened to and heard and um, it was a great, um, she was very much valued and so we're looking forward to the new head, uh, Dr. Mark Herko, um, and I'll post a little information about that. Um, uh, any other old events? There's so many things. Oh, I went, Jaha, sent, uh, Congresswoman Johanna Hayes and I had a um, listening event for first responders in Falls Village just before Thanksgiving. And um, that was really great because, um, you know, we, and to be able to sit with Congressman Hayes and try to talk about how we can leverage both federal and state resources to, to, to um, correct the, um, some of the mistakes that have been made in the past, maybe make some funds available for things like training for volunteers. And, and in particular, we had a long conversation about 
um, mental health first aid, which we as a legislature passed some um, uh, legislation concerning, which is important, but it, it really is having some, I think, unintended consequences and inappropriately onerous consequences on volunteer uh, EMS. And so I look forward to, to working on that to try to correct some of that. Uh, upcoming events tomorrow, if you happen to be in Hartford, um, there's an active, uh, there's climate change uh, event um, at the Capitol. There's a Connecticut climate strike on Friday um, at noon on the Capitol steps. So I know that you guys are unlikely to be in Hartford. In fact, I'm not going to be in Hartford, but I wanted to pass that along if you happen to be passing by because it's particularly focused on, on um, young people who have been active in um, making sure that climate change is on our radar screen and that we're paying attention to it because they are going to inherit the problems that we have created for them if we don't um, address it. Um, December 7th this weekend, it's Pearl Harbor Day, so there's a commemoration in honor of that in Co Park on, uh, on December 7th. Um, the uh, Democracy First, uh, which is a local advocacy group, is having a meeting on Sunday at Noble Horizons at 4.30. I will be there for that. Looking forward to that. That will be focused on health care. Um, so there will be several presentations about prescription drug costs, uh, the current uh, lay of the land with respect to, to uh, getting health care in Connecticut. Um, and it is getting to be as, as our session starts officially in February. So um, there are a bunch of legislative breakfasts and legislative nights cropping up on, on the schedule uh, where so people um, from various groups and, and um, can get access to the legislators and, and both tell us what they're interested in and listen to what we're thinking about. So there's, there is one at the fire school on Monday, December 9th, which I will attend. And there's one, an educative, education focused one at, at Advance. Uh, for breakfast on December 12th. Um, and you may be here, you know, we, there's much talk, has been much talk all summer long about whether the legislature will have a special session before we officially start in February. And we have now reserved a few dates in around December, the week of December 15th uh, to address a variety of issues. I will keep you informed if that actually happens and, and what we, what, what is on the agenda right now, it's all a lot of unknowns. We will see, but we have reserved the dates. Um, and then I just wanted to say, Anna, uh, just, just, you know, it's dark, it's icy. Uh, I've just pulled up to my house where there is a ton of black ice on my driveway. So please be careful uh, driving and walking out there. Um, and because uh, I think we're expecting, expecting a little more snow, no more storms this week, I hope. I don't want to be on record for that because as soon as I see say it, it'll start to snow. But um, welcome back from Thanksgiving. Uh, good luck to everyone in these this crush of two weeks before Christmas. Uh, and have a great weekend. Stay warm and safe and, and uh, dry or unsnowy unless you're going out to have a snowball fight. Um, and I'll talk to you next week. Thanks.